In this video, we're going to be analyzing an RL circuit, and we're going to be solving for uh, current with respect to time. And the first thing we need to do is just take a look at this full circuit here, and then later on, I cut out a little chunk of this, and you'll see why momentarily. So the first thing we want to find is I0, which is our initial current that is running through our inductor. So as soon as this switch is closed over here, our inductor is going to have an extremely high resistance, but over time, it will eventually have current passing through it and there will be basically no resistance and then this will create a short in this branch over here. So as the current starts to flow this way, it's going to want to complete this loop over here. But then after it passes this branch over here, it's going to go through our 4 ohm resistor. And then if it has an opportunity to go through a 2 ohm branch or a branch that basically has no current at all, it always takes the path of least resistance and then it's going to complete that loop over there. So let's go ahead and redraw our circuit. Um, we know that everything must go through the 2 ohm resistor. And then after that, it's either going to branch out to the 3 ohm or the 4 ohm resistor before returning back to the voltage source. So let's go ahead and separate our branches here and then have this one go down to the 3 ohm or up into the 4 ohm and then back to the source again. So this is our high potential and low potential. So what we can do is we have uh, basically a 2 ohm in a series here and then a 4 and a 3 in a parallel chunk. So let's go ahead and find the total resistance of this parallel chunk, which is going to be 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3 equals 1 over RT. If we do lowest common denominator, we have 3 over 12 plus 4 over 12 which is uh, 7 over 12, that is eventually going to get inverted. So it's going to be 12 over 7 as our total resistance for this particular chunk right here. So um, when we take 12 over 7, uh, that comes up to about 1.71. So although the fraction is a little bit more exact, I'm just going to round it off and treat it as a 1.71 ohm resistor. Now that 1.71 ohm represents this parallel chunk over here, and it's in combination with this 2. So the total resistance for this entire circuit is going to be 2 plus 1.71. And that will sum up to 3.71. So that's going to help us to use Ohm's law. And we know the voltage is 10. So we can do 10 volts divided by 3.71 ohms. And then that will give us our current of 2.7 amps. Now, a couple things about that. Um, 2.78 or excuse me, 2.7 amps is our total. So there's no um, different branches for the electrons to take during this path over here. So this will get the full current of 2.7 amps. And then if we multiply the current times the resistance, then we could figure out the voltage drop is 5.4 volts. Now, if I go ahead and subtract 5.4 from the 10, that leaves 4.6, so there's going to be 4.6 volts per branch. Now that we have the voltage drop for each branch, we can use um, Ohm's law again, do voltage over resistance to get our current. So V 4.6 over R4, 4.6 divided by 4 is 1.15 amps. Do the same for the bottom, 4.6 volts divided by 3 ohms is 1.53 amps. Now let's go ahead and trace this back to our original drawing. Our original drawing goes to the two and then either goes to the three or the four. Now the path that goes to the four is the one that goes through our inductor. So that's the one that we're more interested in. So we're gonna focus on what's happening with this branch over here with our four ohm resistor. And that is the one that gives us 
this current, which is our initial current. So that checks us off for our I naught. And now what we want to do is eventually find tau the time constant by finding the resistance of the circuit after the switch is reopened. So if this switch over here is opened up, it basically ruins the complete loop for this two ohm resistor. So that's why I basically chopped off this initial chunk over here and that leaves everything from here to here. Now, with that being said, um, we have now the inductor that is pushing that current of 1.15 amps. And like I said, that's our I naught, our initial current and through sort of a new circuit. Now that new circuit has a branch with a two ohm resistor, and it also has a branch that goes through the three and four ohm resistor. So it's basically a parallel circuit with a two ohm resistor in one branch and seven ohms in total for the second branch. So we can use the same method we used before and do one over seven plus one over two equals one over RT. And then we would be able to get the total resistance of that chunk, which comes out to 1.56 rounded off. All right, so let's go ahead and rearrange a little bit of this so that we can solve for the value for our tau and then also solve for our final solution as well. All right, so now we have everything cleared off. Um, we only need a couple numbers anyways, which is our I naught. And then this RT is gonna help us move forward because we have this formula over here, time constant equals L over R. So tau equals L, which is the inductance of two Henry. And then over the total resistance of 1.56 ohms that we just saw for a moment ago, if we go ahead and divide those two, and that comes out to about 1.29. All right, from there, um, we can solve for our I of T, which I accidentally erased a little bit earlier. And our I of T would be our initial current that we got earlier, 1.15 times E to the negative T over tau. And then that is our current with respect to time. So what you want to do in those types of problems is treat that inductor as a short circuit initially uh, to see how much current flows through it by basically using Ohm's law and a bunch of different concepts along with that, as we did earlier in the problem. And then once you get that I naught, then you reopen the switch to see how the inductor is going to push the current through the circuit when the switch is open, which was our second drawing over here. And then from there, we're able to take a look at what happens with the flow of electrons and find the total resistance of that new circuit so that we could go ahead and find the time constant over here. And then once we got that, that was the final piece that we needed to place into this initial formula here and then get this little piece for our final solution. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.